Hello everyone. Today I've got three amazing indie horror books that you are going to love. And that's pretty usual. But these ones are perfect for the Halloween season. Uh, these are all new releases and these are also really good if you know somebody who's just now getting into horror. Maybe you have teenagers at home and you want to get them into the genre but you're not really looking for extreme horror or splatter punk or too much blood and gore just for the sake of blood and gore. Uh, these ones certainly fit that bill. They're, they're scary, they're frightening, they're thrilling and chilling, and yet uh, they're good for most ages, I would say. Yeah, I mean, you know, teenagers nowadays, they have their phones everywhere. They've seen worse things on the internet since they've gotten out of bed today. <laughs> So these ones are perfect for fans who are just getting into horror. Uh, maybe teenage uh, kids who are just getting into horror. Or if you, like myself, are just a kid at heart. And you just want a good, scary story. These three books will do it for you. Uh, and as always, I want to remind you that I have horror books for sale. The ones you see on the screen are only a dollar each. And there is a link down below where you can purchase them if you're interested. All right, let's get started. So the first book I want to talk about today is called Frostbite by uh, Angela Sylvain. This is just a fantastic combination. It's got some sci-fi in there. Uh, it's got some comedy in there, some very dark humor. Uh, and it's got a ton of horror. And I guarantee you, this has things in there that you have never read in a horror book before. Uh, this one is set in the 90s, so it's also got a lot of those cult, uh, pop culture references from that era in there. So if you're a fan of nostalgia, this one will uh, bring you right back to that time. It's set in the, in the middle of winter in a small fictional town called Demise, North Dakota. Uh, and uh, one day a meteorite crashes to the earth in, in, in the back of uh, our main protagonist's trailer. Her name is Realine. And when she goes to investigate it that night, uh, she sees something kind of ooey and gooey oozing out of it. Uh, and so she decides to wait until the next day. But the next day it's too late because uh, the whole area is surrounded by news vans, by police, by uh, the military, uh, by scientists in hazmat suits because of this crashed meteorite. They don't know what they're dealing with. But we are going to find out because, uh, let me just say this, alien infested murderous prairie dogs. If that sentence right there doesn't want you to jump up and buy this book right now, I don't know what will, because that is just the start. Uh, this is an alien invasion story, but uh, they're not the little grays or the big tall aliens. These are parasites that came in this meteorite. They've infected the burrow of these prairie dogs underneath the ground. And they, they are now coming up in the middle of winter as murderous rampaging creatures trying to spread this parasite around. Every animal and every human that attacks and bites is, gets infected and they turn into bloodthirsty raging maniacs. And Rillene and her best friend Nate, they begin to piece together and find out what's going on. And with the help of some other townsfolk, uh, they're going to try to stop this. However, their town is quarantined after a while. Nobody can get in, nobody can get out. Uh, and the town is basically just going to hell because of this invasion that's going on. And they are aware of what's happening, but nobody else does. Uh, and in the meantime, you also have this cult in town. <laughs> And this is a hellfire and brimstone cult that believes that this is the sign of the end of the world. And of course, anybody who's not part of their group are sinners and evil and demons. And uh, they were meant to be destroyed. And they will stop at nothing to destroy all the non-believers who might seek to stop what they believe is this apocalyptic event. Uh, so our, our little group of survivors trying to trying to make it uh, throughout these next couple days are at the crosshairs not only of vicious creatures other and other humans that are infected by this alien parasite but also this cult who is hell-bent on stopping them from delivering the truth so that their prophecy can be fulfilled. This is a very horrific uh, 
are kind of bloody as it should be when you're dealing with something like uh, you know murderous prairie dogs going on a rampage but not overly so uh, and and it does have a comedic element in there but this author never takes it to the point of full-on comedy uh, she blends all these elements together perfectly and the comedic aspect aspects give a little lighter tone when needed but it never breaks up the narrative it's never a distraction the story keeps going along nice big action sequences and even some surprising deaths that are going to happen in this book that are heart-wrenching that will actually tug at your heartstrings because you just they just kind of came out of nowhere and I just want to say one thing there's a character in here named Carl He's kind of a side character, but I love Carl, and uh, she is planning on writing more books from this world and with these characters, and I can't wait to see more of Carl. you got to find out about Carl. <laughs> so go ahead and pick up your copy of Frostbite. There is a link down below uh, where you can purchase yours through Amazon. And next we have a book that is uh, absolutely perfect for this time of year, I'm telling you. It's called Hallow's Eve. It's by William Oswald. And if you are a fan of the movie Trick or Treat, and if you're not, you definitely need to get on that. It's one of my favorite movies to watch around Halloween every year. Uh, you are going to love this book if you like that movie at all, because it's got the same kind of vibe. It's kind of half anthology, half novel with different characters. All of these stories interact with each other. They are interconnecting with characters showing up in multiple stories and different angles that support each other's stories. And it's all set in the small town on Halloween. And uh, some of the stories in here are absolutely great. There's a story about two guys who are going to do something nobody has ever done. There's no lady in town who lives by herself. Everybody claims she's a witch. Everybody's scared to go on her property. But on this Halloween night, they are going to go sneak into her place toilet paper her yard and uh, do what all everybody does nowadays they're going to record it on social media to try to get some uh, traction <laughs> and they are going to be heroes they think but then something goes wrong first her cat escapes and gets hit by a car and then she comes out of the house screaming and accidentally falls cracks her head open and she dies they panic the two guys panic and they run away well, maybe the rumors about her being a witch are actually true, and we're going to find out what happens to these two when revenge comes looking for them from beyond the grave. And uh, that's an excellent, scary story. There's another one in there about a house in the middle of the woods. Uh, supposedly, a man had killed like eight kids in that house at some point. So every year, teenagers party out in the woods, and then they carry these jack-o'-lanterns to this house. There's nine jack-o'-lanterns, eight for each of the children that they light. And then one year, everybody, or somebody every year, has to go into the house, into that spooky house, up the spooky steps, uh, to the bedroom where this man supposedly lived, and place another jack-o'-lantern on his windowsill. This is supposed to stop his spirit from coming back. Well, this year, when they're performing that, Everything goes off the rails. Everything uh, falls apart, and uh, it's not going to be good for anybody. <laughs> let me tell you that. Then there's another one about this guy. He's he something happens uh, during his night shift at a convenience store gas station type place. So he locks himself in, and he starts seeing things. He starts seeing movements and figures uh, behind the coolers inside. A uh, hideous face scratching at the window. Uh, right in front of right in front of his convenience store too realistic to be a halloween mask wants to get in and he can't figure it out but when he does well, it's quite a shock as to actually what's going on that has a nice little twisty ending there that uh you'll definitely want to read about and throughout all these stories there's some guy in a in a classic car and a mask and he's just out killing people we don't know anything about him we don't hear from him he doesn't really talk much but uh, yeah, he's just going around killing people on this Halloween night, and that's going to follow these people through these stories. Yeah, like I said, if you like the movie Trick or Treat, this one is going to be a treat for you because it's fantastic. It's got all those vibes. It's got the Halloween feeling about it, you know, and uh, it'll raise the hackles on the back of your head. These are uh, all these stories are excellent, and they all come together cohesively. 
and uh, I highly recommend it and there is a link down below where you can pick up your copy of Hollow's Eve. And next we have Grave Vengeance by Mitch Larkins. This one took me by surprise and this is again one of those fun, uh, easy to read uh, blends of like uh, dark comedy and supernatural forces and uh, bloody mayhem all combined into one. This is about a girl named Alice, and she is a uh, she is a lonely girl. She doesn't have any friends. She is always by herself in school. And one day, some popular kids decide to befriend her. And uh, a few months later, she thinks they're all friends. They've been hanging out. Everything's good, until she realizes that on this night, they plan to sacrifice her in a ritual. That was their plan all along because they needed virgin blood, and who's more of a virgin than Alice, <laughs> as you'll see. And so they sacrifice her, and in her dying breath, she curses them. And uh, she's, through something that happens, she has to fight her way through hordes of demons, hordes of uh, underworld creatures, and for 10 years, she fights her way through these creatures. Every time she kills one, she gains some of their power and some of their knowledge. And then 10 years later, she rises from her grave back in her body she had be, uh, when she died, but now she's almost like a god. She has these incredible, almost unstoppable magical abilities and different spells, and she's basically indestructible. And she is going to go find these people that did this to her to exact her revenge, and maybe even go beyond. She might not stop there. Maybe she wants to take over this whole town. Maybe she wants to destroy the whole world, such as her revenge-fueled mind and uh, she's going to come up with some very creative uh, very weird ways to torture and get her revenge on these people uh, including zombie mermaids you have to read about that in this book you just have to but the thing I like about this is that Alice is, she's supposed to be the antagonist kind of because she's out to do this murderous uh, commit this murderous rampage you know but uh, you're really going to like this character, Valis. She's uh, Once she rises from the grave, she's no longer that weak, willed, quiet little girl. She is sarcastic. She is snarky. She likes to give these one-liners as she's uh, about to do what she has to do. And like I said, she's almost indestructible. But there is a twist in here. Because we're going to find out what's been going on between the people she's chasing and Alice... Uh, something's been going on with them for a lot longer than what we thought and we're going to find out this little secret about this story and uh, that was just fantastic I didn't see it coming it was it was great and once we find out more of what's going on we realize just how much danger these people are in and do we want them to survive after all they were very cruel to her uh, and Alice is a sympathetic if not power and murder hungry goddess of sorts <laughs> But uh, oh, it, it's just uh, it's just excellent. A lot of action sequences in here. A lot of very creative ways to that she goes about doing her business, what she came there to do, and uh, like I said, very sarcastic and snarky, and uh, that gives it that that uh, comedic little touch when needed in this book. And I really really appreciated that. Uh, th this book is excellent. And again, there is a link down below where you can purchase your copy. And I highly recommend it. All right. So as always, I want to say thank you for taking some of your time and spending it here with me. And until we meet again, keep reading spooky, my friends.